So basically for this one, we're adding fractions. For the first one, that's 5 eighths. This guy is 1 out of 6, and this guy is 3 out of 7. And clearly all those circles are the same size. Yes, I drew them so well. Um, but yeah, 5 out of 6. So 5, five out of 8, 1 out of 6, 3 out of 7. We've got to add these. Now in order to add fractions, you need a common denominator. Uh, we need a, and the common denominator is going to be your least common multiple. And I say least, but it, you can choose a bigger one first if you want. Um, that's fine too. You'll just have to simplify it later. So the least common multiple. So lots of ways to find your least common between 8 and 6 and 7. So one way to do it is to take your multiples of 8 and just keep going until you find one that um, is divisible by both 6 and by 7. So it's actually going to take a little bit for this one. Um, so there's 1 8. So the multiples of 8 are multiple 8s, right? So there's 1 8. If you had 2 8s, you'd have 16. If you had 3 8s, you'd have 24. If you had 4 8s, you'd have 32. We should be checking each one to see if they're divisible by 6 and by 7. So 16 is not divisible by 6, so he's out. 24 is divisible by 6, but not by 7. He's out. 32 is divisible. No, no. So we just keep going. 40 is not divisible by 6. 48 is divisible by 6, but not by 7. Uh, 54 is divisible by 6, but not 7. 60, same deal. Um, 68. Man, so you keep going, <laughs> and then you get up to 168, and that is your, that's divisible by both everything, 8, 6, and 7. All right, so, and I'll show you a couple other ways if you don't want to go out that far, because that was kind of a pain, right? So, but let's say we, and we found out that our common denominator was 168, and what you want to do is, um, make these all into a common denominator. So 160 divided by 8 is 21. So if I were to multiply this guy top and bottom by 21, one of my students just told me we're multiplying by fufus, forms of 1, fancy forms of 1 of fufu. So you can multiply any fraction by 1 and it doesn't change, right? And they, they make a big deal about multiplying by 1 and staying itself, and it always seemed kind of duh, but it, you, we use it all the time to, to manipulate stuff. So if I multiply the bottom by 21, I get 168, and if I multiply the top by 21, I get 105. So same thing here, what do I multiply 6 by to get 168? Well, 168 divided by 6 is 28. So my fancy form of 1, my fufu here, is going to be 28 over 28. And so this is going to equal 6 times 28 is 128, 1 times 28 is 28. There we go. Uh, same thing down here, 168 divided by 7 is 24. So my fancy form of 1 is 24 over 24. So 3 times 24 on the top is 72. Now that they all have like denominators, I can add the numerators. 105 plus 28 plus 72 is 205 out of 168. And you look at your answers, and of course it's not there, because this is an improper fraction, and they want it written as a mixed number. So fractions are always division problems, right? 205 is being divided by 168. That fraction bar means divide. So if I divide 205 by 168, 168 goes into 205 once, with so much left over. Let's see. If I do 205 minus 168, that gives me 37 and 168. So 1 with 37 left over. This is your answer. Your answer is C. It's a lot of talking, but it wasn't such a bad concept. The thing that bugged us both, most about it was getting this least common multiple. Let me show you a few other ways to get around that. So we just did it trying to do it brute force, listing out all the multiples of the biggest factor you have and checking, 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 checking. And it took a little bit. 
um, another, you're like, oh my god, this is taking ever. You don't have to go for the least one. We could have gone for a bigger one. So let me make sure you have this. Let me write this again with a different common denominator. So let's say if I were just to multiply 8 times 6 times 7, that would certainly work. If I do 8 times 6 times 7, I get 336, and that will work as a common multiple because it's clearly divisible by all of them. So now your fancy forms of 1 just change. So 336 divided by 8 is 42. So my fancy form of 1, my is 42. So 8 times 42 gave me 336 as planned. 5 times 42 gives me 210. Uh, let's see, for the next one, 336 divided by 6 gives me 56. So my fufu here is 56 over 56. So the top, 1 times 56 is 56. Uh, for this last one, 336 divided by 7 is 48. So my fancy form of 1 is 48 over 48. 7 times 48 gives me 336, as plus 3 times 48 gives me 144. So now they all have a common denominator of 336, which means I can add up all the numerators. 210 plus 56 plus 144 gives me 410. Now this is a fine answer, but you can see that it's not reduced, right? Um, these, since these last digits are both even, you can see that it's divisible by 2, at least. So if you divide the top by 2, you get 205. If you divide the bottom by 2, 336 divided by 2, you get 168. And that looks familiar, right? That is exactly what we got when we did it the first time. And so it's going to, as a mixed number, become the same answer we got the first time. So that is another way to get those common denominators. Now, yet another way, just because we can, is to um, get our least common multiple by being a little bit more clever, by using our prime factors. So, let's do this to make sure you got that. And we are going to try to find the least common multiple of 168 by looking at 8 and 6 and 7 and figuring out what their prime factorizations are. There's a reason why primes are so useful, and this is one of them. So if I took 8 and broke it down to its primes, that's 2 and 4 and 2 and 2. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. If I broke 6 down, that's 2 times 3. If I broke 7 down, that's just 7. So when I am creating my least common multiple, my least common multiple, remember here we found out later that it was supposed to be 168, it has to be divisible by 8 and by 6 and by 7. Now in order to be divisible by 8, it has to be divisible by 2 three times. So my least common multiple must have at least three twos in order to be able to be divisible by eight. To be divisible by six, my least common multiple must be divisible by both a two and a three. Well, we can see it's clearly already divisible by two, but there's no three in there, so let's tack one on. To be divisible by seven, it needs to be divisible by seven. This guy has no sevens yet. Let's put one in. So now it should be divisible by 8, it should be divisible by 6, and it should be divisible by 7. Now if you were to punch this in on your calculator, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, oh no, 168, there it is. Kind of cool, yeah. So you don't have to hunt for it if you use this. Although most of the problems on this particular test, if you keep hunting, you will find it. Um, but it's a good trick to know and something that you'll probably be teaching but uh, and the, teaching the kids but the kids won't get it until later so um, but it's good we know it now so that's that